Okay, in this video, we're gonna look at a problem from the 2006 International Math Olympiad shortlist. So it's a problem A2. So these shortlists are broken down into categories, algebra, combinatorics, geometry, so on and so forth. So this is the second one from the algebra category in this shortlist. Okay, so it has to do with the following uh, sequence. So we wanna define a sequence of numbers A0, A1, A2, and so on and so forth by a0 equals negative 1 and then the sum k equals 0 to n of a n minus k over k plus 1 equals 0 and so you could clearly solve this for the a nth term in terms of um, the terms a0 through a n minus 1 but as we'll see in our solution that's not super helpful and uh, this works for all n uh, bigger than or equal to 1 Okay, so now our goal is to show that a n is bigger than or equal to zero for all n bigger than or equal to one. So notice our first term, or I should say our zeroth term is negative one. So what we wanna show is that that's the only one that is negative. After that, they're all positive. Okay, so here's our strategy. And uh, maybe like after I outline this strategy, if you wanna pause the video and give this a go, that might be a good idea. So um, clearly, induction is going to be a good choice because we're trying to prove something is true for all values of a sequence and so generally when you're doing something uh, like that proving something that's indexed by natural numbers induction is a good choice now uh, strong induction is actually a good choice in this case and I'll look at, I'll let you look up what the details are for strong induction versus regular induction when we look at the solution we'll see that then the next thing that we'll want to do is re-index two versions of this star so that they easily combine. So there's actually a hint in the writing of this problem that that's going to be a good strategy. And that hint is given by the fact that this sum is indexed so we have a sub n minus k here. Now notice, if you look at the n plus first term of this, you'll have an n plus one up here and you'll have an a sub n plus one minus k. So naturally these sums don't combine very easily and I think that's a really good hint that you should probably re-index them so that they do combine very easily. And then the next thing that you want to do is take a linear combination of these two sums that you've re-indexed in this second strategy so that they eliminate a0. Okay, so why would you want to do that? Well, notice that A0 is a negative term, and we're trying to show that everything is positive. So it makes sense that we would want to eliminate that as part of our goal towards uh, proving that A n is bigger than zero for all n bigger than or equal to one. Okay, so I'll go ahead and clean up the board. Um, while I clean up the board, maybe give it a go, and then we'll look at the solution. Okay, so hopefully you've given this problem a go, and now let's go ahead and look at the solution. So like I said before, we're gonna do this with strong induction, which means we need a base case, and our base case is going to be the n equals one case. So uh, what we need to do is look at the n equals one version of this sum. So notice that is going to be uh, the sum k equals 0 to 1 of a sub 1 minus k over k plus 1. Great. But that thing is supposed to be equal to 0, uh, given that that's how we're recursively defining all of these terms. But notice that this sum is exactly equal to a sub 1 over 1 plus a sub 0 over 2. Great. But uh, notice that gives us a1 minus a half. So we have a1 minus a half equals zero. So it uh, really easily follows from this that we have a1 equals one half. And that's clearly just from looking at the extreme left and right hand side of this equation. There's not really much to that. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take our induction hypothesis. And so this is a strong induction hypothesis. And what we want to do is suppose for all m between 1 and n, um, we know that a m is bigger than 0. 
Right. And then, so in other words, we have A1 comma A2 all the way up to AM is bigger than zero. And let's point out that what we want to show in order to complete this argument is that A sub N plus one is bigger than zero. And that will finish off this strong inductive argument. Now, maybe before we get into the meat of this, I do want to point out that uh, you might want to try to find a closed form for these numbers. So I uh, played around with that a little bit, not super long, but a little bit. Um, I plugged it into a pattern finder in Mathematica and it didn't find anything. So that doesn't mean that you can't find something if you try a little bit harder than I did, but it's not like an obvious uh, sequence. Okay, great. So uh, now, like I said, we want to re-index two versions of this so that they can easily be summed. So the obvious two versions to look at would be the nth sum and the n plus first sum. So let's look k equals zero to n of a sub n minus k over k plus one equals zero. And we know uh, k equals zero to n plus one um, a sub n plus one minus k over k plus one also equals zero. All right. So we want to re-index this one so we have an a sub k here. We want to re-index this one so we have an a sub k here. So let's see what that'll take. So this one will take replacing k with n minus k. So notice if we replace k with n minus k, then n minus k becomes k. And we have our sum just going in reverse. So if we plug k equals 0 into this, we get n. So that's our new starting point. And if we plug k equals into this, we get 0. So that's our new ending point. So it just swaps the order of the sum. But that's okay. So that turns this thing into the following. We have k equals 0 to n of a sub k over um, n plus 1 minus k. All right, so that's what we get from plugging uh, n minus k in for k into this part. So we know this is equal to zero. Now we're going to do something similar here, um, except we have to deal with this n plus one thing. So here we're go going to replace k with n plus one minus k like that. And so this will have the same effect of reversing the sum and changing everything kind of as needed. And so this will give us um, the sum k equals zero to n plus one of a sub k over um, n plus two minus k equals zero. Okay, so we have those two things are true just from re-indexing. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and erase the board. I'll bring this to the top and then we'll continue on. Okay, so in the last board, we argued that our defining relation for the sequence can be written in these following forms, um, the nth uh, version of it and the n plus first version of it. Now, the next thing I wanna do is take out the k equals zero term from both, um, and maybe the k equals n plus one term from this last one. So uh, notice that over here, we're going to have, this is going to be um, a, 0 over n plus 1, so notice that's the uh, k equals 0 term, plus the sum k equals 1 to n of a sub k over n plus 1 minus k. Okay, so that's what we get for that. Um, and then for this one, let's make this separation a little bit more obvious. So for this one, we get uh, a sub 0 over n plus 2. Um, plus the sum k equals 1 to n of a sub k over n plus 2 minus k plus, let's go ahead and look at the k, the n plus first term here as well. So we have a n plus 1 over, so we need to plug k equals n plus 1 in there, so that's going to give us a 1 in the denominator. We have n plus 2 minus n plus 1. Great. So now notice that we have uh, this guy right here equals zero in this term, and we have uh, this guy right here um, equals zero in this term. So now the next thing that I want to do is take this second one and solve it for a n plus one because that solves very, very nicely for a n plus one. So notice that's going to give us a n plus one equals um, minus 
minus a0 over n plus 2 minus the sum k equals 1 to n of a sub k over n plus 2 minus k. So we've got something like that. All right, so now the next thing that I said we wanted to do is take a linear combination of these so that we cancel the a0 term out, and that's essentially what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna do it in a slightly different way. I'm gonna take this equation and add zero to the right-hand side, but the version of zero I'm going to add to it is this quantity multiplied by something so that this cancels out. In other words, I'm going to add n plus one over n plus two times the quantity a zero over n plus one plus this sum k equals one to n of a k over n plus one minus k. So we have that. Fantastic. So let's see what happens now. Notice that um, this guy right here is going to cancel this guy right here after we distribute that onto it. Good, and then the next thing that we can do is um, find a common denominator for these two sums. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and add this, multiply this by n plus two over n plus two to make it all work out a little bit better. And that's gonna leave me with uh, negative n plus 2 over n plus 2 times this sum k equals 1 to n of a sub k over n plus 2 minus k um, plus n plus 1 over n plus 2 the sum uh, k equals 1 to n of a sub k over n plus 1 minus k. So we have that. Now the next thing that I want to do is take a 1 over n plus 1 out of this whole thing and then I'm going to distribute the n plus 2 onto this, the n plus 1 onto this, and I'll also switch the order and combine the sums together. So let's see what we get. So this is going to be the sum k equals 1 to n and now we'll have n plus 1 times uh, a k over n plus one minus k minus n plus two times a sub k over n plus two minus k. Great, and so that's just from distributing and combining those two sums together. So we're running out of room, so I'll bring this up to here, and as I do that, I'm gonna factor an AK out of this, because notice we have this AK is a common factor for both of these terms. And just to point out that both of these are inside the summation. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So on the last board, we got to this point. So we have a sub n plus one is one over n plus two, the sum of n plus one over n plus one minus k minus n plus two over n plus two minus k times a k. Now the next thing that we wanna do is mash these two fractions together, and we're gonna do that just by finding a common denominator. So, uh, Notice these are successive numbers, so that means their greatest common divisor is one, which means their um, least common multiple is their product, so that'll be our common denominator. So we'll go ahead and multiply uh, this side by n plus two minus k over n plus two minus k, and then we've got to multiply this side by uh, n plus one minus k, n plus one minus k. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. That'll give us one over n plus two. Now we have the sum k equals one to n of n plus one, um, n plus two minus k minus n plus two, n plus one minus k all over um, n plus one minus k times n plus two minus k. Um, and then I should say this is all multiplied by a sub k. Great. Okay, so now notice that we can treat this n plus 2 um, as kind of a term by itself and this n plus 1 as a term by itself so that when we foil these out, it's not actually so bad. So notice that's going to give us 1 over n plus 2. Now we have the sum k equals 1 to n. So we're going to have n plus 1 times n plus 2. So that's that times that. 
And then uh, next we're gonna have minus k times n plus one. So in fact, we're just distributing this n plus one onto each of these two terms. And then that's the same thing we're going to do over here. We're going to distribute this n plus 2 onto both of those two terms. So notice that's going to give us minus n plus 2 times n plus 1 um, plus n plus 2 times k. And now that's all over the same thing that we had before. And then times this a k. So now some stuff cancels. Notice this um, obviously cancels with that. And now notice here we have n plus 2k minus n plus 1 times k, but notice uh, these guys are going to cancel off and just give us k. Great. So in the end, we have the sum 1 over n plus 2, um, k equals 1 to n, and then k over n plus 1 minus k n plus 2 minus k times a k, but this is bigger than zero. And how do we know this is bigger than zero? Well, the k terms that we're summing over are all positive. The n plus 1 minus k terms that we're solving over are also all positive. Same for the n plus 2 minus k terms. And then the a k terms are also always positive by our induction hypothesis. So let's put that, and that is because a1 up to a n are positive by our induction hypothesis. So that finishes this solution. And that's a good place to end this video.